grem, deset od učutka. Urlač i spektakl, ne vidje na ovim prostorima. Ulaznice za Final Fight na eventim.hr Pat H.D. Barry, and you're watching the Fight Channel. Okay, we're here with Pat Barry. Pat's gonna eat his first chevapi ever. Ever, oh. ever, man. Ever since I've been in town, everybody's been telling me, you've got to try a chevapi, you've got to, because I've been going to different places to eat, and everybody's telling me this is a custom, and I've got to have it. I had no idea what it was, and I didn't ask, I didn't look it up. Figured we're just gonna come in for the first time and just order it, and whatever comes out, I'm gonna eat it no matter what. I had no idea it was gonna be a bunch of Arnold Schwarzenegger cigars, like like coming out, man. So this is, this is apparently is. What did you say this was? This is a shivabi, but what is it? It's like a meat kebab. And how, what's the history? What's the story behind it? It's, it's Turkish. A, it's Turkish origin. Turkish yeah. origin. But it's a traditional meal now here. Traditional meal. Yeah. I'm too. No, I'm just kidding, man. This is, this is, you know what? It's as good as it smells, and it's good like it looks, man. It's just, he says don't dip it in ketchup, but I've got to show my American side. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't, don't tell anybody. It's a big cultural no-no. Hey, <laughs> this makes anything better, no matter what. Onions, <laughs> french fries. If I could dip my Coke in it, I would do. But, survive and cool with me. I'm going to eat this entire plate, and I'll come back to y'all in a minute. Okay, but you now have a natural defense against uh, Mirko's Jiu Jitsu. You're eating onions. This is what I was told. <laughs> this is how you get out of submissions. So I'm going to sit in, I'm going to eat a plate of these. Apparently, it stops you from being choked out. I don't know. I'm going to test it out today, though. Uh, it was stuck. Uh, you almost closed your eye. What happened? You're training with Madam Bresto. Yeah, uh, training with uh, him and uh, Crow Cop on the, first, the very first day. Um, I got a poked in the eye, which uh, tore two holes in my cornea and had like a partially detached retina on day one. I landed Sunday uh, and on Monday, Monday evening it happened. Yeah, I had this a laser, a laser surgery on my eye, not LASIK, everybody thinks LASIK, not LASIK, I had laser surgery on my eye um, where they, they used the laser to close the holes and something to make sure the retina was attached or something, but yeah, I was wide awake for it. The very first thing I see is an old heavyweight guy with an eye patch on his eye. So as soon as you walk in the look, I go, oh no! And then I turn to the left and there's a woman sitting a few seats over with a patch on her eye with some tape over it. And I'm like, oh no! Ah. As soon as we walk in the door, we walk down the hallway, we go to get in the elevator, the elevator door opens and a lady walks out with an eye patch on her eye. And I'm like sitting there like, this is bad, we gotta leave. Shane Dolor Savio signed with the UFC. Recently, he's a world white tight champion. You're a top kickboxer. Maybe after his fight with uh, Gabriel Gonzaga, do you consider that it would be a great matchup? Yeah, hey, I me, mean, it would. I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've seen him before. I, I know him. Uh, I've trained with him uh, for like maybe two weeks or something like that when he came down uh, to Death Clutch Gym. Um, good guy all around. He's got great, great instincts when it comes to kickboxing. I know he's. He's uh, really good on the ground when it comes to submissions, um, but he's a kickboxer first, man. So, you know, I mean, kickboxers have pride. We're going to stand there and we're going to punch and kick each other until, until, <laughs> until we fall out, man. And uh, would that be a good matchup? I think so. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I mean, he has this fight with Gabriel Gonzaga. I have to, you know, I have to make sure that I beat uh, LeVar Johnson. Um, but would that be a future matchup that I would be looking forward to? Absolutely, man. I mean, Shane Del Rosario, like I said, he's... He's good, man. He's crafty. He's uh, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of uh, off the wall things when it comes to his striking. He's not not very conventional. He's not by the book, and that's what makes him that's what makes him great and dangerous. I think that'd be a great test. Okay, uh, Shadow Rosario lost his uh, Muay Thai championship fight against Ginty Brede, young Sudanese guy who died 23 years ago. You used to train with uh, Ginty in uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, when I was in I was in Amsterdam uh, training with Ernesto Hosts uh, with Team Perfect, and uh, Ginty was over there for a little while. He came by every once in a while, and yo know, man, he's not he wasn't wasn't sorry he wasn't the world's biggest guy in the world. I mean, he's a decent sized guy, but man, this guy hit. Like, it didn't matter if he punched you with his left, his right hand, his left or his right hand, or if he kicked you with his left or his right leg, everything he hit you with was just ridiculously hard. I mean, I didn't, it didn't make any sense. They had, they had days at practice where he would throw a punch that I would block 
and have to go, hold on for a second, my, I can't see, like, you, I blocked the, how did you punch me in the glove and my eyes went blind, or he would, and he'd kick you in the body, and even if you blocked it with your forearms, it, you, all of a sudden you, could, you couldn't smell anything, or you could taste iron, I mean, it was just, it was, it was, in, it was insane, I couldn't, I would sit up at night, like, trying to figure out what about this guy's body makeup made him capable of hitting that hard, generating that amount of power. Sound like, like Tyrone Spong, like, he wasn't a big guy either back then, but something about this guy, I mean, they would punch and kick you, and it just didn't make any sense. It wasn't like the kind of punch and kick that hit you and hurt. It was the kind of punch and kick that hit you, and it, it was so hard, it would make you go, what? Do that again. Like, that doesn't, like, it would, con it would confuse you. It wouldn't just hurt. It would go past hurt to confusing. It didn't make any sense how, how, how they were able to do that. Okay, uh, you switch. Uh, it's obvious that kickboxing is your love. Why did you switch to where? I switched over to MMA, I mean, one, because MMA was taking over the world. Kickboxing uh, just wasn't getting the notoriety that it should get. Uh, so MMA was taking over and it was the next big thing. Um, and, I mean, it's also a financial decision. Like, because kickboxing isn't getting the notoriety that it does, just the payments just weren't there. You know, I mean, unless you were, like, the top two guy in the world, I mean... It just it financially it just was a better decision, um, but all around it was the, it's, the, it's the evolution of sport. It's just it's the next big thing, and if you want to be the world's greatest, you've got to be really, you know, you've got to be ready to take on anybody, anywhere at any point in time. So that was that was the next move. Um, so I made I made the transition over, and it's been it's been cool ever since. Okay, during your Sancho and kickboxing days, you trained with Shaolin monks in China. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, Master Sean Liu. He was a disciple. I think he's like 32nd or 34th generation. A uh, disciple of uh, the Shaolin monks, and um, he uh, moved over to the States, and I met him there, and uh, I trained under him uh, for years. We've been to China quite a lot. I trained with the Shaolin monks uh, there, um, where, you know, I mean, all the things you see in the movies where they have the bright orange flowy clothes and they can fly through the air, man, all that's real. Like, these guys were just, they're all around. I mean, just what they're capable of doing was just amazing. One, the physical things that they could do, the things they could physically do was just, and it was out of this world, but... They say, you know, it was all spiritual, it was all mental. The brain is the strongest weapon in the world. If you can somehow access parts of your, you know, your brain and you convince yourself that certain things are real and you can do these things, like they have just a mental ability that's out of this world. They have a mental discipline that is just, that's unmatched uh, by anyone. And uh, that's, that's the majority of what I, what I got from them in growth, is patience, you know, things like that. Okay, uh, to return to the Crow Cup. Okay, how do you see his uh, upcoming match with uh, Ray Seffo? And you know what, his Crow Cup, Ray Seffo, these are two of the greatest in K1 ever. They, like, there's like, there's, if you think about K1, if you know about K1, there's like, there's like eight, nine guys who just stand out more than anyone else, you know, and uh, Crow Cop and Ray Seffo are two of them. So the fact that they're, they're, they're being matched up to have a fight, that's a, that is a, that's like an early Christmas to any kickboxing fanatic out there. That's an early Christmas for all of us, man. That's a gift that we've been given with these two guys. Um, how do I see the fight going? You know what, man, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough one because everybody's very well aware of what Crow Cop can do. Everybody's very well aware of what Ray Seffo can do, you know, but Crow Cop is training hard, man. He called me out here. I've been throwing heat at him the entire time that I've been here. He is every bit capable of defeating anybody, man, and it's coming back to it's not an MMA match. There's no wrestling jujitsu. He can come out here and he can kickbox the way that the legendary Crow Cop has been able to kickbox his entire like career. That's what he's known for: his punches and his kicks. You know, when they switch over to MMA, the punches and the kicks have to change because you have to, you know, worry about the wrestling and the defense and the, the longer rounds and whatnot. But this is, this is back in the day, early '90s, Miracle Crow Cop, who's gonna come by and he's just gonna throw punches and kicks until Ray Seffo isn't standing there anymore. This is, this is, I can't wait. To, I'm, I'm more excited about this fight than I'm about my fight with Lavar Johnson. You uh, expected to meet uh, Lavar Johnson at uh, UFC in May? Yeah, UFC is the Fox 3 card. Um, it's uh, May 5th, Lavar Johnson. Lavar <laughs> Big Johnson is his name. He's uh, 6'5", 260 pounds. I think he's got his record is like 16 wins with four losses. He's got four losses by submission, similar to me. Uh, and he's got 16 wins. And 15 of his 16 wins are all are like first round knockouts. So this is a heavy hitting, big giant guy where his arms are bigger than his legs. If he punches you, it's over with. I mean, he hits really hard, uh, and he's rarely seen round two. He's not a wrestler and he's not a jujitsu guy. So we're pretty much we're pretty much the same person except he's taller.
I'm cuter, but he's taller. Uh, but he managed to knock out the Mexican shooter. He was able, I was there in Chicago. He was his first UFC fight. He, uh, he's been in strike, he came over from Strike Force. He made his UFC debut against Joey Beltran, the executioner who I fought, uh, and was able to knock Joey Beltran out in two minutes of round one, which has never been, Joey Beltran's never been knocked out. Joey Beltran's never been knocked down. And he hit him in the, he hit him with like three or four uppercuts and Joey Beltran fell out unconscious. And when that happened, the whole arena just was, I mean, shocked. Like this has never happened. Joey Beltran is known for this guy can take a beating. I kicked him in the head five times, kicked him in the leg 36 times. I mean, I hit him with everything and he kept coming. That's what he does. He's a, he's a living zombie. And LaVar Johnson was able to punch him in the head and knock him out. That's unbelievable. Uh, you told me earlier that you started to doubt in yourself after that fight with Joey Beltran. Oh yeah, that's the very first time. My, my entire career, I've had 100 kickboxing matches and 10 MMA fights. And my entire career, the Joey Beltran fight was the very first fight that I actually ever started doubting myself. I mean, round one, I know everybody's tough. He's, he's a really tough guy. He can take a lot of damage, but I'm Pat Barry and I hit really hard. Round one ends. I'm like, okay, no problem. Round two, I'm like, all right, I know he's tough. He can take some damage, but I'm Pat Barry and I hit really hard. Round two ends. Round three, I'm thinking, okay, he's tougher than most people that I've ever seen. But I knew that coming into this fight. I'm Pat Barry. I hit really hard. Halfway through round three, I started thinking, maybe I don't hit as hard as I, as I say I do. Maybe he's a... Uh, this is, this is unreal. I mean, I kicked him in the face five times. Face, five head kicks, 36 low kicks, unblocked. They all land. I kicked him in the legs so many times that my legs started swelling up, and I couldn't, like, I was on crutches for two weeks after the fight, and this guy didn't even have bruises. He was walking around the, the day after the fight doing squats and getting kicked in the leg and running up hills, and this is unbelievable. Like, that was the very first, that's the very first time and the only time in my entire career that I've actually been completely, I've got no explanation, none. No explanation, I can't give you, Chuck Congo knocked me out after I'd already knocked him out twice and I was able to get over that one. That's just, okay, he threw a punch and landed. Joey Bellatran, I've got no explanation at all as to how he was able to take what he took from me. You, you mentioned Chick Congo, what happened there? Another zombie? Uh, yeah, man, there's something. That's, yeah, I hit Chuck Congo in the head, knocked him down, hit him a lot, he got back up, I knocked him down again. You know, hit him a lot, he got back up, and I walked towards him to finish him, and next thing you know, I was waking up. I woke up and thought I won the fight. Like, I woke up and was like, yeah, I hope he's all right. Does he do too much? And they were like, no, man, you're out. I was like, I'm not out, he's out. What are you talking about? I'm out, he, he's out. Is he, is he okay? Did I kill him? You know, and they are like, no, man, relax. He, you know, you're on the ground. I remember the, the doctor to my left. I didn't know I was laying down. I thought I was still standing up. The doctor to my left said, uh, can you do me a favor and try to sit up? And I remember I stopped and looked at him and was like, how am I gonna sit up if I'm already standing? You, the worst doctor ever. You should, how did you get this job? You should be fired, man. And then my senses started coming back and I, I felt the ground and I realized, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> well, I had never, I've never been knocked out before. That was, the, that was a really weird feeling, man. Patrick have lady waiting for you in the United States. What can you tell us about her? I said, uh, she's me. Her name is Rose Nalan Yunus, uh, she's an athlete, uh, she's Lithuanian, her mom and dad are Lithuanian, she was born in the States, um, she's a fighter also, she's got a fight coming up uh, March 17th, this will be her fifth fight, amateur, and then she's going to turn pro after that, um, she's, a, she's a killer man, like she's a killer, I know a lot of guys like, oh man my girlfriend's the best, but this is no joke, this girl is, she's a literal monster, like she's fighting for potatoes, or, like if I don't win I don't eat, I mean it's just some, you can tell like she's, She's, she's all around, she's just an athlete, she's a cross country runner. She comes from a family of wrestling. She's black belt in karate, black belt in taekwondo. She wrestled on an all boys wrestling team in high school and was winning. But it's the prime reason why I've never been in a street fight. My entire 32 years, I've never been in a street fight. Why? Because if you look at her, you would never think she would kick you in the head and kill you. Thank you, Pat. That's it. Uh, it's nice to see you. It's nice uh, that you visit Croatia. I hope to see you again. Yeah, you're right. I'll definitely be back, man. This is. Especially go eat some more ceviche. Uh, what was that? Shivapi. That was <laughs> the chibapi. There we go.